So as more people are going to be playing today into tomorrow and a lot of people are going to be getting their hands on the Necromancer, a lot of people who've been playing the game already have a really good understanding of just how all of the mechanics kind of work together. But if you're watching Necromancer content, you're going to be hearing a lot of like buzzwords that aren't really going to make sense because you have to piecemeal a bunch of things together. Remember when everybody was saying that like itemization in the skill tree and all of that wasn't really deep in Diablo 4? Well, they were completely wrong the entire time. And we're going to use this as an opportunity, one, for you to learn that, and two, for you to learn how to empower your necromancer. I'm going to go step by step here. One, we use essence. Essence is our resource. You can think of this like mana, but when we talk about resource and resource generation, we're talking about essence. Basically, we are currently running Champion's Demise, and I'm just going to name when I use different abilities. Just remember this, though. I have 160... How much essence do I have? I have 176 essence, which is like way too much. It's nearly double what you normally would have. So you're going to see my orb fill up and you're going to go, oh, that's actually like not that much essence. And it's just that it's nearly double the same size. So what you will get is effectively double what you're seeing me get. So right here, I have a whole bunch of monsters and I'm already at max essence. I need to kill them. Bang. So I just killed some of them. I'm going to cast my corpse explosion. And every single time that I do, you'll see that my orb, my essence orb fills up a bunch. And then also you'll notice that randomly my essence orb is just like jumping up more than it normally should. And now I'm going to do this and I'm going to cast corpse tendrils. I'm immediately full. And then when they all pulled in, I was filled back up to half because there were that many monsters within its range. Now I'm going to cast bone prison and I'm all the way full on essence again. So those are the three different types of examples here that you can expect. And that's what we mean when we say crowd control is our essence engine or we're regenerating essence or resource or we're using this as a more efficient engine that's what we're talking about here so on your gear you can get maximum essence you can also get essence generation bonuses so all those things refer to your mana globe right here you're going to be hearing a lot of people talking about of the umbral this is a legendary aspect you'll see that it's imprinted on my ring here and it says restore between one and four of your primary resource when you crowd control an enemy crowd control includes slows stuns immobilizes freezing chill um knock back knocked down everything that stops you from being able to move or stops the monster from being able to move is a crowd control effect so every time I successfully apply crowd control effect to a target, I generate my resource. And basically every build uses Umbral because it's that powerful. Now these are your basic skills. You'll see that they say generate essence, which is our resource. And you might go, oh, okay, you have to use these generator skills to be able to get your essence. And that's what you do in the beginning of the game. It's basically what you do. You use bone splinters because it generates the most essence because it hits the most targets. Now here's the problem. Once you get past level 10, 20, being able to use a generator skill, your basic generator skills, is way too inefficient to keep up with your spender skills. When I talk about a spender skill, I'm talking about something like Bone Spear here. It says essence cost 25, and 25 is a lot of essence. Remember, Bone Splinters at max capacity only generates 10 essence and typically only generates six essence. So to be able to use bone spear one time, I have to hit somebody with four bone splinters. It's actually a little bit less than that, but don't get caught in the weeds right now. So when we talk about we need an engine, we need a resource engine for our build, we need a more efficient way to generate essence than the basic skills because they're incredibly weak, they don't do a lot of damage, they don't apply a lot of stuff. For the Necromancer, we have Grim Harvest. It's what was uh, recently nerfed. This used to say nine essence at three skill points. Now it only says six, but it says when you consume a corpse, generate six essence. So when I use corpse explosion to consume a corpse, not only does it do the corpse explosion effect, but I also generate six essence. And I'm going to tell you that the corpse generation in the corpse consumption engine is one of the best engines for the Necromancer. Well, I just told you that you can actually generate greater than six essence using bone splinters. So why would this ever be better? Well, that's when you start getting into the cool way that all this plays. Remember when I was telling you about the umbral aspect, right? So umbral on my ring says I need to apply crowd control. And every time I do, I'm going to generate three essence. I'm a pure bone build right now, but you'll notice that on my corpse explosion, I'm using blighted corpse explosion. And that's because blighted corpse explosion changes corpse explosion into a darkness skill that now deals damage over six seconds. When an area of effect dot is on the ground, 
it ticks twice per second and it deals damage on each second equal to two ticks. Reason why that's important is because Corpse Explosion has a 47% lucky hit chance and on every tick we apply our lucky hit chance. So if we know that is happening, what could we possibly put onto our Corpse Explosion engine to make it so that it applies crowd control? Well, if you go down to Crippling Darkness, Crippling Darkness says that your darkness skills have a lucky hit chance of 15% to be able to stun. Stun is a crowd control ability. And now, since my Corpse Explosion is a darkness skill that ticks twice per second, and it has a 47% lucky hit chance coefficient, that means that twice per second on every target inside of my Corpse Explosion, I'm rolling a 15% chance to apply stun. Not only is that applying crowd control to actually save my life, but every time it applies stun to each individual monster, it generates me three essence. Since I have my corpse explosion always generating six essence and then potentially generating three essence on every target twice per second every time it applies stun, you can see how it becomes more efficient than your basic generators. I'm going to show you the two other examples of really efficient generators that I'm using because the corpse explosion engine actually isn't even sufficient enough at high end and high level content to be able to meet my resource requirements because I'm a bone spirit build. So I need to be casting my spells at maximum essence every six seconds. So now let's look at corpse tendrils. Corpse tendril says it doesn't consume a corpse. So I'm not getting the six essence when I cast it on a corpse, but it applies two instances of crowd control when it activates. First, when it rolls out, it applies a slow, and then when it pulls everything in, it applies a stun. So when it rolls out and there's 10 targets, you can actually have infinite targets, right? As long as all the monsters are within range. But if there were 10 targets, when I cast Corpse Tendrils, it immediately applies slow to all 10 targets. That's 10 instances of crowd control. That's 30 resource generated for me. And then when it pulls everything in and stuns them, that is another 10 instances of crowd control, which is another 10 instances of me generating three essence. So Corpse Tendrils on 10 monsters generates me 60 essence when I cast it. Then you have Bone Prison. Bone Prison, with its upgrade, says that it generates 15 essence when you cast it, and then an additional five per enemy with inside of it. And you might go, oh, okay, that's like pretty good. You have five monsters near one another, but it goes even further than that because I'm currently using an aspect that says that Bone Prison spawns Blight. Blight is an AoE damage dealing skill. Not only that, it is a darkness skill if we go look at it. Blood is a darkness skill, so the AoE damage on the ground can now trigger Crippling Darkness to be able to generate me Crowd Control Umbral Essence Return. Not only that, but it also applies a slow the moment that it applies to a target, so that's applying Crowd Control, gaining me additional essence. And then it also has a chance to immobilize. Immobilize is another Crowd Control effect. Now that's already like super good, super great, awesome, but it goes even further than that because I have Blight's Defiled Area, the area of effect over which it puts itself, when spawned, pulls in monsters around it. Now, the pull isn't a crowd control effect. It is literally crowd controlling, but it doesn't proc Umbral in that way. But when it pulls all of the monsters into its range, it automatically applies its slow from all the monsters being in the Blight, which generates me essence. And then there's more monsters within that small area over which the chance to immobilize can apply to them, generating me more essence. So this is what we're talking about when we say essence generation or engine or us, you know, like a resource management for specifically the Necromancer, but really any class in the game. And when we're talking about Umbral being one of the strongest aspects in the Codex of Power, this is why. There are a ton of ways to be able to stack on all these different abilities by using specific aspects and using particular skill modifiers and enhancements to make it so that all these things work together in concert to get you much larger returns than you typically would expect.